Welcome to Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action, bringing fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom for today's shifting paradigm. Now, it is your moment to open your mind, relax into your body and spirit as we explore the greater meaning of your now experience. Bringing wisdom, laughter, and clarity, here are Shri and Kira. Well, namaste, beloved ones, and welcome to Sri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Kira Ra, and today we are diving deep into universal spirituality. One of my absolute, I love talking about this, especially in this month of messages from other dimensions. You know, we've been delighted this month to have had some uh, uh, very interesting guests oh, yeah. uh, contribute their, their perspectives, their passions, and their wisdom, and and one thing that you're going to find is uh, that all of these guests have in common, and that is they are touching something beyond the physical. Something Absolutely. where there is reassurance, love, and guidance. Well, and it all comes back to this stunning heart energy. And that's, you know, Shri, we've been so blessed to have such a powerful month of guests. And, and today, certainly, just it just keeps getting better. And I love that. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that we want to look at, and I'm sure that those of you tuning in have already discovered, is that polarization right now on the planet is at an all-time high. And for the first time ever, I actually ran across a poll. They actually did a poll on this saying that Americans in particular are at the highest rate of polarization in any form of history that they can remember as far as this, you know, picking of sides and opinions being accepted as facts and this almost an entrenchment in, in opinion. There seems to be a, an energization of opposites. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, certainly you can witness that in the U.S political system with the the ongoing dynamic of, well, and, of the House of Representatives you know, against the president. Absolutely. And, and yes. you know, I've, I've got to giggle. I'm giggling because, <laughs> excuse me, one of the things that I saw yesterday, which just I had to giggle, was that for the first time ever, they've now come up with a triple X small size. And I giggled over the fact that this is such a, a another form of polarity. Well, in my lifetime, I've experienced <laughs> XL and occasionally a double X. <laughs> but, but I, I remember one time you were almost an L, Shri. I do. I honestly remember that. But but think about that. But the, you know, the flip side of yeah. the obesity problem in the United States, North America, and other countries. Other actually, countries, certainly global. Uh, is this ultra thin? Right, and all I'm saying is that it's it's affecting this polarization. Energy is showing up everywhere. And ironically, I found this in a beautiful campaign that is coming out. It's a beautiful campaign directed mostly at women. And uh, one of the ones said, like, what's wrong with this picture? And it was a picture of a very lovely young woman, probably about a size 14. And the answer was nothing. You know, there's nothing wrong with this picture. And I found that to be really, really profound because as we are reaching these peaks in polarity, a lot of these are around dogmas, around religions, around this rising tide of me versus you or us versus them. And this is where the blessing of universal spirituality can step in and really embrace a heart-centered expansion. And yeah. I'm, I'm excited to talk about that today, dive into that. Absolutely, because uh, when we look at the outer world, I think if there's one thing the outer world teaches us is don't don't take it at face value. <laughs> the Unless you're getting plastic surgery from some guy in Hollywood, that's a whole other show. Well, you know, I look at, I look at the tensions <laughs> in the world, the pain in the world, the conflict, the religious uh, right, alignments, right. and, you know, it is this polarity that's growing. Yes. And yet, uh, within myself, when I see that I, 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 part of me says, okay, learn, learn, learn. Yeah. You know, how much pain does it take to wake up? And what an individual question. Because Absolutely. every being has their level of threshold on pain. And you know, hey guys, speaking of your level of threshold and pain, I know a lot of you have been trying to call in and get on today's show. Keep calling. Call back. Just go ahead and give a buzz right now. 888-627-6008 and jump into the queue. Um, but go ahead and give us a call so we can get you in because we are eager. And I know that our guest and all of us are delighted to have and expand this conversation. Absolutely. And let's expand the conversation right now to include a, a dynamic and beautiful guest, Patricia Cota Robles, who is the 
the co-founder and president of a nonprofit educational foundation that's called New Age Study of Humanity's Purpose. Now, Patricia has been doing this work of communing with uh, divine beings and celestial sharings for, I believe, well over 20 years. I'm going to ask her when she gets on the line. Here. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know that uh, she has, she and her partner have traveled throughout the country and then throughout the world spreading messages of reassurance and connection. Yes. And uh, uh, one of the things that you'll find at the, her website, which is simply Era of Peace. Dot org. Make a note of that, guys. It's that dot .org. Dot .org, eraofpeace.org, and the title says it all, is the divine intent of these celestial sharings is to give humanity greater clarity and understanding as we progress through these wondrous but extremely challenging times on Earth. You know, that is so true. They are wonderfully challenging <laughs> in every way. So without further Aww. ado, I welcome Patricia Kodorovli. Welcome to the show, Patricia. This is an exciting time, and I'm glad to be able to share with all of you and to hear all of your wonderful sharings as well. Well, thank you. We, uh, you know, we're still vibrating from the blessing we had several years ago of being with you at the World Congress of Illumination that you host every year. It was just extraordinary, and it's a delight to have you back on the show through this powerful time right now. Thank you. It is very powerful time, and this is really a time that we've been working toward for probably hundreds, if not thousands, of lifetimes. And as the Company of Heaven is sharing with all of us at this time that 2014 is a year like no other because we've reached this frequency where we are being accelerated at warp speed beyond mm -hmm. even the greatest expectations of Heaven. So we are definitely moving forward in the light. And that unfortunately is what looks in the outer world creating more chaos because mm -hmm. as the light increases on earth since there is no separation it pushes everything that conflicts with that light to the surface exactly so we're seeing all the chaos in the outer world coming up to the surface what we don't see as easily is the incredible light that's pushing it to the surface so beautifully shared and so beautifully stated. Because I, you know, I know in, in my journey, when uh, when faced with an increase in love, certainly that which is unlike love comes forward for healing. And it can come forward within yourself. Ab yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm thinking absolutely, about. Is, yeah. is, is, oh, is absolutely. Old, old unforgiveness, old judgments, all, all of that stuff. Uh, sometimes abject terror, because you're in the face of everything you've ever wanted, and that can be absolutely terrifying. And, and so is that, uh, Patricia, do you believe that this polarity we're seeing on the planet is a direct result then of the increased vibrational rate? I, I do believe that. I think that the, the energies that are pouring into the planet are from the higher frequencies because we are literally lifting up in energy, vibration, and consciousness. And anything that conflicts with that light, these higher fifth dimensional frequencies, is pushed to the surface. And the only energies that exist in this higher frequency are love and reverence for all life and the oneness of life and the new planetary cause of divine love. So everything that conflicts with that, which is all of the opposite polarities, are being pushed up. Anything that conflicts with love is being pushed to the surface to be healed. And you know, this goes back, actually, to the very beginning when we talk about, you know, receiving the, the information from our Father, Mother, God, do not partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you know, and that's been discussed through all world religions and to all studies of spirituality in one way mm -hmm. or another. And all evil is, is the absence of love. But mm -hmm. what has happened is we've gotten into this distorted perception, and when we respond through our creative faculties of thought and feeling with an absence of love through our free will, then those things manifest as poverty and disease and war and pain and suffering, and every malady that's existing on the earth is something that began with an absence of love associated and an absence of oneness and an absence of reverence for all life. Well, so you know, I love how you're sharing now, that. You know, the, the, you. the mm -hmm. um, 
I think one of the things that uh, has troubled humankind for a long time is the lack of discernment, the ability to recognize what is healthy and nourishing from well, what, what is egoic or, or self-destructive. And, you know, the way I like to look at this is it's almost like a rubber band. You know, if you take a rubber band and you hold both ends of it and you pull, 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 eventually you can't keep pulling the rubber band, right? <laughs> because what's going to happen is you have to let go. You have to just release. And with all of this, I love, Patricia, when you were mentioning about the oneness and the love, because in this experience of allness, you know, here we are in this extraordinary planet and everything without, you know, there is no judgment around the expression. So showing up. everything is showing up. And yes, with that magnitude of light, everything is showing up with a greater presence. And it's like our rubber band has almost reached its limit. And the gift of that is that when we finally relax, when we allow this, this beautiful expansion to occur, when you let go of a rubber band that you pulled so tight, it's always bigger. For the stretching, it never goes back to Just the way it was. Just don't let go too quickly. Or well, you, no, it can okay. hurt. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But yes, we get stretched and we're forever expanded. Uh, Patricia, I, I love what you were sharing. In, uh, you know, in terms of the general uh, understanding of the rising tide. However, many people are drowning in their individual stories, in their individual lives, yeah. trying to find their way through to hold the frequencies. And, and to hold love. So how do you encourage people? You know, you mentioned earlier, and, I, and, and it was such a brilliant thing that you mentioned, is that because of this, you know, the great energy that's here, everything is being seen, and we don't always see the beauty of the light that is here. And so what are one of the ways that you encourage people to discover that? Well, some of it is just really a greater level of clarity and understanding, as Sri was saying. And, you know, right now, the beings of light are sharing from the higher realms mm -hmm. to move us out of this fragmented, fear-based consciousness of our lower human ego into the reality of knowing that there is no separation. And because we look at the whole world and we know that God is all there is and God is everything, with this duality, we've created this distorted perception that everything was created by God and that we have to have these polarities in this duality. And so we believe that we cannot experience peace without the opposite polarity of war. Mm -hmm. We can't experience love without hatred and fear. We can't experience prosperity without poverty. We can't experience vibrant health without disease. They think that's the opposite polarity. The beings of light have said that is the most inaccurate and destructive belief <laughs> system we can have because everything that's creating pain or suffering of any form is a human miscreation. It is something yeah. the sons and daughters of God have taken our thoughts and feelings and miscreated that is without love that is now manifesting as this distortion. There is the duality. Of course there is the duality, but the duality is not good and evil or harmony and discord. The duality is the outbreath, the radiance of the outbreath of light and power from the masculine polarity of our Father God and the cohesive in-breath going into the great, great silence of divine love of the in-breath of our Mother God. And it is the in-breath and out-breath of God, not harmony and discord, not, you know, peace and war. So what we have to do is once we understand that, because as long as we have that belief system, we keep perpetuating the maladies because we think oh, that's part of what is a natural part of our experience. And so what we need to do is realize, okay, just as we're, you're talking about everybody, some, you know, have their are so buried in their painful experiences, their own life expressions, that they have a hard time perceiving the light. But if we can come to the realization that everything existing in our life that is less than heaven on earth, the original archetype for this planet, is a human miscreation, and it's something that we personally have either deliberately or inadvertently miscreated through a lack of understanding and awareness once we started falling into denser and denser frequencies of vibration. And these things are coming up not to take us down the tubes, not to punish us, but to give us an opportunity to experience the results of what we have created so we can see how we've used our gift of life and what we created as a result of that. 
and then to flood it with love and light and transmute that war back into peace, transmute that poverty back mm-hmm. into abundance, transmute that disease back into vibrant health. Because all of the energy, every particle and wave of life that's manifesting as those painful experiences was originally pure divine light from the heart of God that we absorbed as our gift of life and that we transformed into these gross mutations Mm -hmm. through the misuse of our thoughts, words, actions, feelings, beliefs, and memories. So one of the things that that, I I really love what you're sharing and one of the things that um, comes forward for me in chatting with people is how do we train ourselves to perceive differently? Meaning, humanity has been co-creating these coarser frequencies, co-creating suffering and a lot of tragic strategies for con- connection. Right. And we we have a habit of this. It's it's as if it's built into the human brain. Well, there is a, you know there is a psyche. There is a belief system. There is a collective well, belief a, a, system. A collective limiting belief, limited belief, but. And at the same time, when we relax into our hearts and open our higher exactly. chakras, this this uh, soul wisdom uh, comes forward that is different than the earthly brain. And the beauty of the soul wisdom is that when we live from our presence rather than our words, you know, so often we feel that our words are what can assist others. You know, so many people say, you know, I, I'm concerned about my mother, my brother, my father, my sister, whoever, my friend and my boss, when the reality is when we anchor this type of energy, when we anchor this love, when we anchor this recognition, when we anchor this flow, we become the living presence that inspires others to do the same because our words cannot change what's happening on the planet. As as you're saying, Patricia, and I agree wholeheartedly, th- this has been a manipulation. You know, this, uh, well, and, there's and, a distortion at work. Exactly. And, and, and yet to stand up and be authentic exactly. in, the face, in the face it means you have energy. to live the presence. You can't just talk about it. You yeah. have to live it. And, and that's the blessing. And and that living it is what will start influencing the greater co-created experience. Well, and, you know, speaking of living it, we have all these amazing people holding to join our conversation today. So why don't we jump out, reach out, and say hello to some of these beautiful present people? We'd love to take a caller. Let's go to line one and bring in Tara from Colorado. Well, namaste, Tara. Welcome. I'm going to say hello, and hello, Patricia. I'm um, so uh, happy you're on the... I just want to say thank you for all you've done for humanity, and um, I will, I'm will. i from Colorado, and I will be at your uh, meeting um, next Sunday, and I was uh, at your meeting uh, two years ago in Colorado as well. Um, and since then, well, my life has are. completely changed. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm going back to college and studying um, electrical slash energy engineering and have been downloading um, the ways that we can move forward to um, bringing more sustainable, renewable energies to the planet that will not no longer harm the planet. Um, my question is, um, I go to CU Boulder, and um, CU Boulder and CSU were chosen, um, a, an organization out of France, chose uh, five countries to be part of um, a study, and it's amazing because it's actually called Future Earth. <laughs> and um, I, I know that um, uh, I am co-creating New Earth is um, one of the things that I've learned from you. So my question is, um, how do I speak to um, and how do I deal with the folks that are so entrenched in the old fossil fuel mentality without scaring them, without... Um, and how do I engage with them in a way that they can hear and um, and and put forth the downloading of um, and the creation of these um, uh, new energy sources that um, that I'm downloading? Well, that is very difficult because they are so locked into their survival mode financially. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Buckminster Fuller is that when you want to create a new archetype, instead of trying to change the existing model, you create a new model and make the old one obsolete. So the great potential is, Tara, you are going to be drawing, awakening humanity with the funding, with all of the understanding in to do this for you, because the people that are in place now have spent their lives digging in their heels, refusing to acknowledge this. 
So, in the process, certainly communicate with their God self, their I am presence. And you can say, I ask the I am presence of everybody associated with fossil fuels to guide them into a higher level of perception and understanding. But also say, I am magnetizing all of the funding I need, all of the divine intelligence I need, all of the support I need to create a shift and a new reality in the energy production on the planet. 